Okay, getting set up here. Ways, one of my uh, favorite childhood games. It's a real-time strategy game, one of the very first real-time strategy games that was ever created. Uh, definitely one of the, it possibly could be the first real-time strategy game that was created for a console system to begin with. Um, so in this game, you can play two-player, um, which would be split-screen. Uh, you can either, in single-player mode, you can have the display be widescreen or um, have both, you can actually see what the computer player is doing as well, we don't really need to worry about that right now, I'm just going to demonstrate here briefly what a game looks like, a couple of games. Um, one of the advantages that Air Mech Wastelands and Air Mech Strike never ever converted was currently I don't think they have any island levels, anything that has boats or anything of the sort. Um, that is something that is do have to deal with in this game in a couple of levels, at least, possibly three, so uh, just to show you the difference here, and without an instruction manual you'd be lost playing this game. So this is an armored car, and these are your instructions. Um, you can circle, this is like a patrol, it'll circle around a base or whatever. Uh, you can hit a button, and it'll, what, a C I think is what makes it build, and then um, when it gets through building it'll turn into an okay hand, you can pick it up. It's very similar to the way that it works in Air Mech Wasteland and Air Mech Strike. When you're picking up a unit, you have a convertible type mech that can do this. Um, all the mechs can do this, actually. And they can also transform into a ground mode, similar to what you can do here in Fire Guns. And everything. Uh, there are meters over here, which you can see. I'm going to leave the mouse cursor on to demonstrate here. But just for instance, the... Uh, B meter is for the base. This is if the base is taking damage, then it'll slowly degrade, degrade when it is over, you're dead. You know, when it's empty, you're out. Uh, G is your gun meter. It'll real full refill when you're over a base. You can't shoot your guns without it. E is energy. You'll die without that. That drains when you move around. And um, D is damage. And as you take damage, of course, you'll die. Um, when you die, you respawn at a base, very similar to what happens in Air Mech Wastelands, except for you have an unlimited respawn count in this game. So, the other part about this, as you can see, they're down there making bases happen, so we should get on that as well. Uh, this is the one to capture a base, you need infantry to capture a base. There's only this infantry unit in this game, really. So, grab this, go over here to capture an extra base real fast, show you what it's like. Very similar in concept to what they did in Air Mech Wasteland and Air Mech Strike. Of course you can pick up multiple units in Air Mech Wasteland, um, which is very helpful. I mean, he started out with a boat, just going right towards my base, we can't have that. What do you think I am? Very stupid. He just got his first base, that's what that sound was, so I'm going to go ahead and get this now. This will give me mine. And just, that's the go attack his base, which is what he just did earlier for me, for the boat. Just to demonstrate boats and what they do here. There's this water land. They can't go on the land, but they can go in the water and they'll go right to his base and attack it. And of course the concept is that you want to take as many of the bases as you need to, the sub bases, to be able to take out his main base. And um, of course when that's done the game's over and you win this round. There's a whole lot of stages here. I don't know that anyone's ever actually sat out and beaten it fully. I'm sure someone is that level of has. I've come pretty close. I've definitely beat every stage on a round, like the A, uh, C, you know, B, C, D things. Those are, they're difficulty levels, basically. Um, the higher ones, the higher the letter, the more defenses the bases will have, and just generally harder the game will be. In. 
but that's not unlike what they did with Aramek Wasteland as well. Oh, cool, we got him fleeing. Good. So we'll build up a little bit of a defense here. Uh, similar to Aramek Wasteland, when you pick up a unit, you can see their stats, and when you're over over a base of your own with the unit, you can regenerate them. That's exactly what happens in Aramek Wasteland as well. Uh, unlike Aramek Wasteland, this doesn't have, like, they don't have their own energy and gun meter and all that, or mi missiles, you know, they can just fire, and that's how that works. So, okay, my boat just distracted him down at his base for a minute, which is good. We're going to sink another one out there. Now we're gonna go take over one of his bases. And the same mechanic applies as. Uh, Unlike Aramek Wastelands, you gotta kill all the existing infantry units before you can have any of yours go in at all. And this one is just a straight up competition. Um, there's four slots total, and if you put one in, then it'll take one of the others out. Okay, and this is a simple base rush. It shouldn't take me very long to knock this guy out. That's my earlier boat distracting him. And I've got two more on the way already. Make that three. And we'll settle for the fourth one. This is a little risky, but I'm going to go ahead and take care of it like this anyway. We're going to drop one right there. Oh, huh. Not what I meant to do. You know what? We'll take advantage of this situation. Neat. That worked out well. Take this one back real quick and refill it. It served its purpose nicely. Okay, the missiles are a problem, but that's not too big of a deal. We're gonna go make it. Ground movement takes way less energy in this game, so we'll get safely to our base, recharge just a little bit. His base is completely in trouble. We're gonna take this last little sub base that's real close. This is a very quick walkthrough of how to generally beat this game too, because all the levels are sort of broken out like this in the first place. Ooh, I may die. That's okay. And now you'll see death. I wasted too much energy.
do is stockpile a little bit of an attack force first. While we're at it, we can go defend my base. Before he actually captures it. I got my spot back. So this match is generally going really bad for the, the you know computer player right now, and that's exactly what we want. We'll go ahead and build a couple of these now. These are basically your ultimate defense unit against the enemy air mech, as we'll call them here. Looks like he's scouting, actually. He just died doing it, but... Interesting. That's a note from us, dog. <laughs> you just gotta get out of here now. Okay. I'll put another Sam over here. That's just good for attacking the air mech, basically. Uh, they don't have flying units in this game other than the air mech, which is, I guess, a difference that Air Mech Wasteland impl in implemented that this didn't have. So there's that. Okay, well, he's gonna be distracted with that for a second. I'm gonna go back down here and start resuming general base building. Wasting their missiles for a minute over here too, that's nice. Distracted now, that's good. He doesn't even know what to do. <clears throat> I've basically looped out the AI, I think it's broken. interesting technique you can use to stagger defenses out here, or offenses out, I guess. So we're fixing to go on the offense, so we're going to do this.
Changing orders costs money in this game, which is unlike what happens in the other game, of course, so... You're commanding a lot more units in the other game.
still got a few more while I was at it. example of that. I'm gonna go ahead and save this real quick because I would like actually to continue playing this, I think, on stream at some point. Uh, quick save state. If I can find where... Yeah, there. Save state. And we will pause the emulation. Now, we'll go ahead and set up quick scene with Eric McQuaid. And this is Aramaic Wastelands. It's the spiritual successor in many, many regards to the game we were just playing. Um, I'm quite a bit of ways in. It's very Diablo style. Um, up to, you know, two or three people can play in a match. There's also competitive arena style matches in a different version of the game that shares servers with this. Uh, just to give you a quick feel, I'm going to take a... I'm in the Warzone difficulty, which would be similar to being in the second difficulty of the game we were just playing, I guess, out of the four or five. Um, this is what a shop looks like. You can buy different parts for your mechs. There's all sorts of different mechs in this game. Uh, this is my favorite right now, currently. This is the one I use the most, so... Uh, we're gonna go ahead and demonstrate a game with it and what the differences are. Sometimes when you go to add a co-pilot, and you do, you get NPC co-pilots you can add to the match, but sometimes when you go to add a co-pilot, they're queued up so much or something, I guess, that you can't add them currently, so, yeah, here we go. Oh, I'm gonna update my game real fast as well.
Okay, there we go. Now, this is a survival style match, um, meaning you've got to survive a base onslaught, there's waves and everything like that. It's still a similar style setup, as very quickly you'll see. This is our main fortress, akin to what we had um, just destroyed for winning the match condition in the other game. Our NPC is already busy at work. I'm going to make some turrets real quick. These did not exist in the other game, but they'll give our base some defense that will be ready to handle the crap that's about to come. These T-99s have both air and ground defense. Uh, the Gaddies have very high response ground defense, which we'll want, to want a bunch of those as well. That's why we're pumping them out right now. Go ahead and catch a bunch of the bikes here. We have two loadouts we can build from. Uh, one through eight spots. We're going to build a couple of big tanks now. You can automatically place units, which is what I was just spamming to get a bunch of stuff out quickly for the oncoming wave. Uh, as you can see, our NPC's already taken over the base here. I'm going to build some backup NPC like infantry units over here so that we can retake it in the event that, uh, well, in the inevitability that one of these waves here starts doing enough damage, because they will. Um, so we're gonna swamp out. Let's see, that ought to help for the moment. There's a couple of big tanks there. I want to get a couple of the healing pods up on the base now to preserve our units so we don't have to constantly be refilling our turrets over here. These will heal everything in their range. That's something that I don't think there was anything... No, there was a refill truck, but it refilled the other stats that we were looking at, like guns and missiles and energy and things like that. I don't think it actually refilled damage. I could be wrong. Um, Enemy wave eliminated. Go ahead and get some more defenses on this one. This is one of the main ones we'll want to build out. Uh, this four unit the fixer is a, basically an infantry version of uh, the healing pod. It can take a lot less damage, but it's mobile and it has some healing ability, so we want a few of those too. Looks like we're getting some pretty good response over here. I'm going to build out a few extra tanks to drop in the middle of this road to be supplemental. Uh, we'll eventually want to start building out this base too. And I have special abilities in my mech, which is also a new thing. I've already used one of them, I think, without talking about it. Uh, that sound is the base getting hit by something, so it's probably some of this stuff over here. We're gonna... The mech on a ground mode has a melee attack, which is also new. Some of them don't have melee, some of them have additional fire modes or, like, other abilities that come into play. So this is the builder ability. If I hit that, I'm going to go ahead and build the Goliath, which has the slowest build time for me. And I've got a very high level mech, so it builds pretty quick. But as you can see, with the, when I hit that, it builds very, very fast. Okay, so one of the things I just did is going to really help us out here in a second these two little items I picked up just now. I'm going to drop one right here and one right there. We're going to do a few more of these. Another one here, another one there. Now, these little rebel tanks are small, similar to the armored car things we were using at the end of, there of the previous game. Uh, the base is getting hit because of these flying units. We've got enough flying units, I'm not too worried about it right now. Get these to follow us around out here. And kind of swarm up. And 
the reason we're gonna do that is because we're gonna plug a healing pod right behind him. Actually, let's go ahead and get and a few fixers while we're in there. These tanks over here as well. Okay, so we're pretty well defended here for that, and here for these two. We've got to take care of this base, though, probably. We, we, we would like to have that, I think. Personally, I'd prefer having fixers at the helm. Sayonara, suckers. Next wave on the horizon. reason we're rearranging that is to get a socket available for the healing pod here so we can have some more of this. Uh, we're still seeing some light movement here so I'm going to put some heavy or some specifically some gaddies here. Okay, so we'll speak to this. Uh, in the other game, the enemy units, or the units you deploy, deploy the face, way your mech was facing. In this game, they'll deploy the way your mouse is pointing in relation to your mech, so be aware of that. And of course, the deploy, when I drop these little heal units, that yellow radius is their uh, attack, or their heal radius, and the red radius, when you drop a turret, is its attack radius, just for instance. So you'll see how far they'll reach. So we're going to continue to go ahead and build out our defenses here. I think we're in pretty good shape on this, but we're going to be hyper vigilant. There's no reason not to. Uh, similar to what we did over there, we're going to go ahead and build out some traps. Actually, I think we're we'll be better off doing this. That. That's really going to help us out here. So the upkeep is very similar to what was going on in the other game, although I never hit the cap over there, but uh, there was a cap at that game as well, but it's much higher in this one and you can get more units for sure. At this point, it'll tell you that my army upkeep is 3 when I build this, and it'll cost 3 for a minute, but when I grab it, you see how it went down 2? That's because I've got something, some perk or something, I've forgotten what it is already, that's lowering it down to 1 as soon as I get everything. Build this out real fast.
so with my middle mouse click I can shoot this missile ability right here that'll fire heat seeking missiles at the opponents. Also I haven't talked about it much but there is loot occasionally dropping from the enemies and also the orange dots you can see on my radar that are following or falling out whenever an enemy blows up is a scrap that we pick up that we can convert into money or gamble with later on. Here's a piece of loot right there for instance. Some strafing actuators for the Warthog type mech. Sorry about that. Okay, we're gonna keep dropping some fixers here to make this a little bit more powerful. So as you can see, we've got the side bases here, although capturing them with different unit types has a greater advantage for sure. Um, the fixers can heal things from their position, of course, in the base, and have more defense being in there accordingly. There's an extra base over here that I don't even think we've bothered with, but we can. Go ahead and place some roots over here just to make sure we get it. Now we can show off the power of unit spam a little bit too, because I can just like fly through here spamming all sorts of things. I don't think they'll ever get over here, but if they do, I'm prepared. So in survival mode, the waves get increasingly more difficult. As you can see, I'm getting devastators in here now, and not just one. There's like a few, I do believe, will be coming, if not already here. Okay. 
that's more like it. Secure it. We should be good now. Oh, I did. I'm gonna die. That's okay. Break the helix out. It's got pretty high capacity. It'll demonstrate some differences too. And did they wipe us out at those spots? Yep. Nice. Well done, computer. Game. Now the helix doesn't have guns on the ground. And it has a grenade launcher for a backup weapon instead of melee. However, it does have the same heat-seeking missile abilities that our uh, original mech had. And F1 is like super-powered, you know, high-speed missiles. Same as you're shooting normally, just at a very high rate. actually get us killed here. items. So we picked up 14 regular items, one green item, and one purple item, which is a legendary drop. Not bad at all. Just to demonstrate real quickly before we hand it back over to the schedule, what the difference is. Uh, 
No, that's not a good one. Hold on. Yeah, this is a good one. This is a fortress assault mission. Uh, yeah, basi basically, it's exactly what we were doing in the previous game. All right, pilot, you know the drill. Clear this scrap out of the way.
Now we're just going to get kind of reckless with this and just build out as fast as possible and take as many bases as quick as we can. guy is already at an uh, inability to counter this, I do believe. So now we're just going to go ahead and all out assault his base. It's pretty much what we did the last time. We took the closest base we could, started overwhelming his defenses, and just pummeled him for it in the long run. That's exactly what you got to do. There we go, this fort didn't stand a chance. Go ahead and pop up the scrap here. Items. Let's make sure we didn't miss any items. Oh, I'd fall too late. I meant to click on the whole thing to get it away, but whatever. Cool. We didn't get much out of the way of that because I kind of ran through it. I do have a key for this. There are crates and keys in this game, but you can get both of them through matches in Ermac Wasteland, so it's all cool. Um, let's see here. And real briefly, just before I step away to give one last comparison, of course, in uh, the other game, you had your base color was a Black Ops. Here's Black Ops. In this game, of course, you have uh, you can change your loadouts. There's all sorts of different things. You can get stat readouts on them here, like this, which is pretty cool. I mean, all in all, this is a really well put together game. They still need to do a little bit more work on it, and it sounds like they may still be working on it, but we'll see. As it is, I'd still recommend buying it on sale. It's a great game. Um, 
You can sell scrap if you want to, or you can gamble with it. I'm, I'm mostly selling it for now, because the kudos is how you level up your mechs, which is how you get more powerful everything, pretty much. Except for drops. Your drops come from matches, for the most part, so... Let's see, I saw something here. Was that something? This? Yeah, it looks like it. For sure, for sure. That's a pretty big upgrade. Oh, well, you know. Okay. No real other upgrades there. Just to demonstrate when you go to a mech that has a component that can be upgraded by what you've got in your inventory, it's usually got a plus. Eh, sometimes the comparisons are a little iffy, but usually they're spot on, so... Like, obviously that's better. Um. There was something else, too, it looked like. Yeah. pretty much sums it up. That's the differences between, you know, the basic differences between Airmac Wastelands and Herzog's Way. You can easily see the spiritual successor qualities to it and how it got to that way, right? Like, it's it's there, for sure. So uh, Both of them are excellent games, and I'd recommend both of them for a playthrough if you're a strategy fan. And uh, At this point now, we're going to go ahead and hand it over to the schedule. We have to get ready for work tomorrow, so... Hope that was enjoyable for anybody that watched, and uh, we'll be back tomorrow afternoon with some more stuff. And until then, enjoy the show. The Nintendo Entertainment System is widely credited with resurrecting the North American home video game market and was a defining feature of the standard American childhood in the 1980s. In 1991, the Super Nintendo was released and immediately locked horns with the Sega Genesis for control of the 16-bit generation. A pair of ill-fated systems launched in 1993 foretold the transition of home gaming into 3D, but it was the 1995 release of both the Sega Saturn and Sony PlayStation that brought it into the mainstream. And even with AAA titles like Yoshi's Island and Donkey Kong Country 2 yet to come, it was obvious that the Super Nintendo could no longer remain as Nintendo's flagship product. On this episode of Classic Gaming Quarterly, in 1996,